A new year means brand new ways to dine around Disney World. So join us today as we show you not only the best things to eat across the parks and resorts, but also the best experiences you can have to go along with each meal. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and I am so hyped for this video because it's been a long time coming. We're always talking to you about the best snacks or the best entrees or the best desserts, but rarely do we get to talk about taking your Disney dining to the next level to be the most memorable part of your whole Disney experience. So whether you're looking for ways to splurge on an incredible night out or ways to save the big bucks but still create sweet moments that'll last a lifetime for you, we've got the 2024 dining list that you've actually been looking for. But hold on, before we start building that itinerary of yours, make sure to scan the QR code you see on the screen right now, or head on over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks for a full list of our top 10 snacks that you should check out in each of the Disney World parks during your vacation. This free digital download comes with full color pictures, snack descriptions, and even detailed maps to show you where you need to track down each tasty treat. Okay, are you ready for the best things to eat in Disney World in 2024? I am, here we go. We're gonna start with a fresh way to see Epcot's newest fireworks show. So Epcot's newest nighttime show, Luminous Symphony of Us, made its grand debut on December 5th, 2023. And while some folks out there are still mourning the loss of the barge projections that we used to have during Harmonious, the DFB team is pretty sold on this new spectacular because the music and pyrotechnics give us goosebumps every time. But you know, different strokes for different folks, I get it. But if you're going to Epcot with the sole intention of having the best fireworks view ever, well, you really don't have to stress about that too terribly much, since pretty much every spot around the World Showcase Lagoon is gonna give you a good spot to see this show. However, you can really go all out by making your first ever luminous watching experience a really great and tasty one. For more of a splurge option, Epcot now has two brand new dining package options that you can choose from. Okay, they're not new new, it's the same two restaurants as the dining packages before, Rose and Crown and Spice Road Table, but it is new because it's a brand new show. The Rose and Crown Fireworks Dining Package offers a prefix meal including an appetizer, an entree, a dessert platter, and unlimited non-alcoholic beverages, along with outdoor patio seating where you're going to get to kick back and enjoy Luminous and be really close to the show. And the Spice Road Table Dining Package includes your choice of two small plates, a shared tagine, a dessert platter, and unlimited beverages, non-alcoholic, along with a seat in their covered outdoor dining room in the Morocco Pavilion, where you again will get to enjoy the show. The Rose and Crown Dining Package is $92 per adult, while the Spice Road Dining Package is $81 per adult. So, you know, I'm not kidding when I say this option's a splurge. You may also be able to get a great view of the fireworks though from the Epcot restaurants with those giant windows that look out across the lagoon, like Shiki Sai, Sushi Izakaya in the Japan Pavilion, or La Hacienda de San Angel in the Mexico Pavilion. While neither restaurant can guarantee a window seat for you or a fireworks view seat as we like to call them, it's always worth asking the host when you're checking in for your reservation, just in case. And don't forget to make a reservation at the right time. Usually 7.45, that's a solid time to make a reservation and ask for a fireworks view table. And don't just think inside the Epcot box with this one. You can take a quick Skylander ride over to Disney's Riviera Resort and eat a nice fancy Italian meal at the top of the hotel at Topolino's Terrace, it doesn't matter where you're seated there because all of Topolino's restaurant guests will be able to watch the fireworks from the comfort of this signature restaurant's comfy, cozy outdoor terrace. Granted, the fireworks won't be as in your face as they will be when you watch them directly inside Epcot, but there's still no denying that Topolino's terrace view. Okay, are we ready multitaskers? This one's for you. You wanna dine and be entertained at the same time? We've got options. Over at Splitsville Luxury Lanes and Disney Springs, you can bowl and eat upscale pub grub like burgers, pizza, and sushi, and their incredible loaded fries. Please order those, please for me. Splitsville also features a drinks to go counter and an outdoor bamboo bar, so you can sip away on specialty bowl drinks too. P.S. You don't have to bowl to dine here and you don't have to dine to bowl here. You can choose either activity or both, but note that dining and bowling are booked separately. If you're ready to be a Disney star, sort of, Kimono Sushi Bar over at the Swan and Dolphin has food and karaoke so you can make your big musical debut and sample dishes like gyoza, tempura, Kobe beef, duck satay, and of course, 
sushi. Karaoke typically takes place on Wednesday through Sunday, starting at 9.30 p.m. Note, unlike Splitsville, the setting here is more bar lounge than restaurant, so this might not be the best place for younger kids, just FYI. And then there's Sci-Fi Dine-In over in Hollywood Studios, which lets you and your fam munch on diner classics like burgers and shakes and deep fried appetizers, all while you sit back in a retro convertible and watch silly mid-century B-movies about zombies and the blob in a drive-in style setting. It is truly one of the coolest restaurants in Disney World. I absolutely love the atmosphere there. And of course, there's Hoop to Do Musical Review if you want to watch a show and eat the food, which we are talking about elsewhere in this video. So not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it here. All right, next section of our best things to eat in Disney World in 2024 video, actually good Disney cheeseburgers. Disney can do a great job whipping up all sorts of food, but when it comes to burgers, well, they're not their strong suit. Then again, there are a few places on Disney property with more than impressive burgers. You just have to kind of sleuth them out. Good burger number one, the Stack Burger at Steakhouse 71 in Disney's Contemporary Resort. This burger is made with a signature blend of beef, American cheese, lemon aioli, red onion, and house-made pickles, all served on a brioche bun and topped with a piece of pork belly. That's right. The burger is like a diner-style burger that you might pick up somewhere along Route 66 in a restaurant with red leather seats and a jukebox, just a whole lot more cheesy, like gobs of ooey-gooey cheesy yumminess, plus pork belly. Did we say pork belly? Because we should talk about pork belly. The burger itself is a little on the fattier side, which we like, but some of you may not be so thrilled with. However, when you couple the signature blend with the pork belly, you've got a real salty, savory work of art right there. Even if you don't make reservations for Steakhouse 71 this trip, you can still pick up the stack burger from Steakhouse 71's attached lounge, which has first come, first serve seating. By the way, the stack burger is not on the menu at Steakhouse 71 for dinner, although you can still order it. But if you have a problem with doing that, go ahead out to the lounge and just get it there. All right, great burger number two, the Bayou Amber Ale Burger in Riverside Mill Food Court at Port Orleans Riverside. Yep, we're telling you to go to a food court to get a great burger. The Bayou Amber Ale is topped with spicy shredded prime rib and an amber ale cheese sauce served on a toasted brioche bun. Beer cheese on a burger, 1000% yes. That cheese is rich and nutty and creamy and complements that already flavorful and slightly charred prime rib really well. The burger itself, unfortunately, does still taste like one of those standard theme park burgers, but the prime rib and cheese sauce definitely spruce it up to make it a whole lot more interesting taste and texture wise. And good burger number three, the bison cheeseburger at Geyser Point Bar and Grill in Wilderness Lodge. This burger comes topped with bacon, sweet crispy onion straws, marionberry sauce, lettuce, tomato, and garlic aioli. Well, usually I steer clear from buffalo meat sometimes because it's kind of lean and gamey, this burger beats that stereotype by being super juicy and hearty. Now there is a lot of flavors going on with the bison cheeseburger, so if you'd rather your cheeseburger be more straightforward, this might not be the artisan option for you. But if you're looking for an interesting take on a classic American entree, the contrast of the sweet marionberry and the saltiness of the onion straws, bacon, and garlic aioli is a really interesting balance of textures alongside a variety of unique flavors. Okay, this next section is for the doubters. Let's duke it out, y'all. There are some rather polarizing snacks around the Disney World scene that people are either gonna love to hate or hate to love. Now, if you've never been to Disney World before, then you probably wanna stick with the snacks you've been looking forward to the most instead of trying to squeeze yourself into some weird snack drama. But if you have been to Disney World before and you do wanna be thrown into the midst of weird snack drama, then I've got a list of split the room snacks that you and your group can try during your next visit. Then y'all can take a vote, American Idol style, and figure out which polarizing snacks are actually the best of the bunch. Now, quick side note, this can actually become a fun killing time while heading back home discussion too. What better way to distract yourself from the end of your vacation and your long trip back to normality than by trying to convince your family and friends why your favorite Disney snacks deserve all the love and attention from your group, right? So the split the room list is the brainchild of our whole DFB team, meaning we all had heated yet civil discussions about each of these snacks and why they should be praised or banished. We're gonna start with that Pongo Lumpia at Pongu Pongu in Animal Kingdom. Some people don't love this gooey cream cheese texture or the unique pineapple flavor of the fried spring roll concoction, but if you're an adventurous eater looking for a snack under five bucks in Pandora in Animal Kingdom, 
then you're gonna wanna give this one a go. A lot of us love it. Next is the blue and green milk at the milk stand in Hollywood Studios. So Galaxy's Edge is home of the very iconic yet very controversial blue and green milk beverages. While many Star Wars fans like to order them just because they're a canon drink from the franchise, others aren't a big fan of drinking these colorful floral mushy milk slushies. But in Batuu, you gotta try it, right? Right. The grilled cheese donut at Everglades in Disney Springs. Yep, there's a lot of ease there. Caters to the folks who want to enjoy a lot of melty cheese on a griddled glazed donut bun. Would you change your mind if I told you you could add bacon to it for just a dollar more? Maybe, maybe not. Let us know what you think. And the school bread at Kringla Bakery Og Cafe. I can't believe this is even on this list, y'all, because this is such an incredible treat. But fine, I get that some people don't like it, and I don't understand. But anyway, here's what it is. It's a cream-filled Norwegian treat. It's been a long-time favorite of mine. Some members of the DFB team are not huge fans of the coconut cream filling, saying it reminds them of taking a bite into suntan lotion, which is just silly. But anyway... You let me know what you think. And finally, the cheeseburger spring rolls at the Adventureland spring roll cart in Magic Kingdom. Somebody just tell me who doesn't like these because I we need to have a conversation. But anyway, most everyone on the DFB team does love our cheeseburger wrapped up in crispy fried golden goodness. But some of us like to remind the team that two small spring rolls that taste a whole lot like a Mickey D's cheeseburger sold for $9.50 is a lot to pay for a snack that isn't going to fill you up. OK, that's valid. I get it. So you still like them, but you just don't like the cost. Right? Is that okay? Just make okay. Moving on. I'm gonna post a few more polarizing snacks on the screen right now that I don't have time to discuss fully in this video, but I want y'all to discuss amongst yourselves. You know, make sure to check out our DFB blog post about each of these snacks before you purchase them, just so you're not completely blindsided by what to expect. Our next section of the best things to eat in Disney World in 2024 is for a day out around the Epcot resorts. Disney resort days can be some of the best Disney days, which should be great news for you because that saves you the cost of an extra day's worth of park tickets. So let me illustrate what a day strolling and snacking around the Epcot area resorts, like Boardwalk Inn, Yacht and Beach Club, could look like for you. I'm going to be under the assumption right now that you're not actually staying at one of these deluxe resorts, but that you're just going to be paying them a visit. But if you are staying at one of these resorts, go ahead and squeeze them some pool time in your itinerary too. So first, start off by ordering a nice Java pick-me-up over at Carousel Coffee in Boardwalk Inn. You may also want to snag a breakfast bakery item from Boardwalk Deli too, before settling in on one of the outdoor benches that look across the Crescent Lake. See that? We're already off to a solid start. Aren't you relaxed? Now, whether you're staying as a guest at Boardwalk Inn or not, many of the recreational activities are still going to be available for you to rent or experience for free. So go ahead and book a Surrey bike for the family to hop aboard for a morning ride around the area. After you're done with that, Disney's Fantasia Gardens and Fairways Miniature Golf is actually within walking distance from the Epcot area hotels, so you can stroll over and compete with your family across 18 holes of Fantasia-themed courses and then walk back to the Epcot Resort area for lunch. Lunch today is going to be at the retro-themed Beaches and Cream over at Disney's Beach Club Resort, which serves up comfort food diner entrees like grilled cheese and tomato soup and Rubens and thick cheeseburgers with a side of fries. And don't forget to grab a milkshake too, either at the table service itself or from its to-go window right outside. At this point, you've probably been eyeballing Crescent Lake for a while now, so how's about actually taking a ride across it? Disney's Yacht and Beach Club has their own marina where you can rent a Sun Tracker pontoon boat that seats up to 10 guests for $49 per half hour. These boats are first come, first serve, so you don't have to worry about making reservations for them. But that being said, if you're worried about that wait list booking up solid before you get the chance to put your name in, you may want to switch around your itinerary and try getting the boat at the start of the day instead of the middle of the day. Totally your call. You can also go on a two to four hour guided bass fishing excursion if that's more up your alley. This is a catch and release experience that you can book ahead of your trip by calling 407-939-FISH. <laughs> all right, all that boating and fishing sure probably made you hungry, which is why we're gonna go to Cruise Cup Lounge for dinner. 
Lounge favorites are available to order from 5 to 9.30 p.m. and include options like truffle fries and lobster bisque, or my personal favorite, those prime rib sliders. Now, depending on when you're gonna be around the Epcot Resort area, that may influence how you experience your day dining around these hotels. Cause in 2024, Boardwalk Inn will be introducing two new dining experiences into the mix, the Blue Ribbon Corn Dog Kiosk and the Cake Bake Shop Table Service. So depending on your preferences, you may want to sneak in a corn dog snack to try one of Blue Ribbon's wacky concoctions like the pickle corn dog with a side of peanut butter, because why not? Or you may want to book a meal for a fancy afternoon tea complete with savory sandwiches and decadent cakes over there at Cake Bake Shop. How about if you need a break away from technology? I've lost count of how many times people tell me how exhausting it is to feel like they're on their phone all trip long. Trying to book lightning lanes and get last minute dining reservations and check wait times, etc., etc., instead of just simply enjoying their time in Disney World. So let's do that. Let's put our phones away and take a trip to Disney's great outdoors instead to disconnect from technology, take part in adventurous activities, and also find some pretty awesome places to eat. Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort is a hub of outdoor activities. Here you can sing songs with Chip and Dale around the campfire, shoot an arrow during archery class, say hello to our fellow equestrian friends at the Tri-Circle D Ranch or hitch a carriage ride from them, fish away the afternoon, watch the electrical water pageant at night on the beach, rent a bike or a canoe or a kayak or a golf cart, take a Segway tour around the resort, and so much more. But while you're filling your day with wilderness activities, you're gonna need to fill your tummy and keep yourself fueled, right? For lunch, you can check out the recently refurbished Trails and Restaurant featuring a market concept with quick service items. It's kind of a food court now there instead of a table service location. There's a lot to choose from. You got pizza, hand scooped ice cream, prepackaged stuff, baked goods, classic barbecue food. And those barbecue entrees include full family meals that come with fried chicken, barbecue ribs, or a combo of the two, alongside a bunch of different sides. And those will feed a family of two to four for only $27 to $31. Y'all, this is the most affordable family meal you've been searching for. Take advantage of it, run with it, savor it, because it's not often you're gonna be able to feed your entire family for under 40 bucks in the Disney bubble. Dinner, however, might be a different, much more expensive story, but for good reason. Fort Wilderness is also home to Disney World's only dinner theater experience, hoop de doo Musical Review. Disney's hoop to doo Musical Review is an extravaganza of food and entertainment that the whole family can laugh with and sing along to. And it's hard not to have a good time here. I've been to this show like 12 times, maybe more, and it's always the same, but it's always fantastic. So located in Pioneer Hall, the setting is a huge barn complete with stage and musical numbers where you're gonna be served literally buckets of food for the table, including all you care to enjoy, fried chicken and ribs, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, even select alcoholic beverages if you're of drinking age. Is this going to be the best tasting food of your whole trip? Probably not. Is having more than one sangria going to make you sick? Possibly. But is your family going to be talking about this one for ages? Yes, and in a positive way, not a negative way. Just remember that you will have to make an advanced dining reservation here, and payments are required in full while locking in those reservations. As far as snacks and specialty drinks are concerned, Fort Wilderness can hook you up with those throughout the day too. If you're 21 and older, you can try a moonshine margarita over at the Meadows Snack Bar to go along with your Meadows loaded chips, topped with pulled pork, cheese, sauce, and jalapenos. Or you can get a full moonshine cocktail flight from Crockett's Tavern and accompany those drinks with some charcuterie, sliders, or other bite-sized bar options. And guess what? Not a phone in sight. Now, how about more affordable dining dupes? Yes, splurging on a tasty Disney meal can be fun and memorable, but what if I told you many of the foods you're looking forward to trying during your next trip can actually be found cheaper elsewhere, like way cheaper? Okay, hold on to your hats and glasses because I'm about to rapid fire a bunch of Disney dining dupes that'll help save you money while you're trying those iconic Disney foods. Dupe number one, grab a box of Ohana noodles from Tambu Lounge instead of booking a full table service meal at Ohana, which is literally only steps away from the lounge. So same kitchen, same nudes. At night, you can even ask for these noodles to go so you can take them out to the Polynesian Village beachside and watch the happily ever after fireworks shoot off over Magic Kingdom. Beach noodles, fireworks, how can it get better? Dupe number two, for breakfast, order Tonga Toast from Captain Cook's at Polynesian Village instead of Kona Cafe, also at Polynesian Village. 
Kona Cafe will automatically upcharge you 17 bucks for the strawberry compote on top of their Tonga toast, but you can get the exact same Tonga toast made with banana stuffed deep fried sourdough bread and sprinkled with cinnamon sugar for about $11 instead down there at Captain Cook's. And that's a great deal unless the absence of the strawberry compote is a deal breaker for you. Dupe 3, try the frozen apple juice at Boardwalk Inn's General Store instead of at LeFou's Brew inside Magic Kingdom. No need to pay for a full park ticket to try LeFou's Brew when you can just waltz on over to the Boardwalk and pick one up there. Inside Magic Kingdom, LeFou's Brew can be found at Gaston's Tavern. It's made with frozen apple juice, a hint of toasted marshmallow, and topped with all natural passion fruit mango foam. But you can get the exact same frozen apple juice at Boardwalk's Screen Door General Store and possibly at a few other places that sell Goofy's Glaciers. The main difference between the two drinks is that the Boardwalk version is missing the drizzle of syrup or foam on top, but it is a frozen apple juice glacier straight from the tap, which is really what gives LeFou's Brew most of its flavor anyways. Oh, and the Boardwalk's version is also a dollar cheaper, so there's that. Dupe number four, order the pineapple coconut bread pudding from Banana Cabana at Caribbean Beach instead of from Ohana. Sorry, Ohana. Hate to dog on you, but you really are an expensive restaurant. And if we can find our favorite Ohana items without having to pay a prefix price of 62 bucks per adult to get them, then we're probably going to do that once in a while. The pineapple coconut bread pudding from Banana Cabana is topped with caramel sauce and served with a side of vanilla ice cream. Sound familiar, Ohana? But this version will only put you back 10 bucks. Wondering if this bread pudding is really going to be as good as the one you'll find at Ohana? Would it ease your worries if I told you the same chef created both desserts for both menus? Great. And dupe five, grab the fish and chips from Yorkshire County Fish Shop instead of Rose and Crown Dining Room. Now, I do love me Rose and Crown, but if you're just looking to order some fish and chips, Rose and Crown's attached counter service location, Yorkshire County Fish Shop, basically serves a very similar option to the restaurant, but instead of paying 28 bucks for it, you'll only pay around 14. And you don't have to worry about budgeting for a tip either. All right, this is one of my favorite ones that we've got for you here. This is fast food that's better than table service food. So believe it or not, the food you pay less for can be way better than the food you might pay top dollar for in Disney World. With that being said, here are our top five Disney World quick service or fast food restaurants that you're gonna to wanna to try for yourself, just to see if you feel the same way we do. First up is Eat in Disney Springs. Now this is Disney Springs' newest fast food restaurant that's won us over. The fast food joint serves up traditional Indian dishes with a more modernized twist, giving us refreshingly new flavor profiles to look forward to with each and every meal. Now there's a lot to love here, from the non bread service, to the tandoori chicken poutine, to the non pizza, to the build your own bowls, and even the dessert. Overall, the innovative items here are unlike anything you're gonna try at any other Disney World restaurant, even the ultra fancy ones. Now, Satuli Canteen in Animal Kingdom, always a go-to for us. If you're looking for an adventurous meal that's quick and affordable and has lots of seating and air conditioning, Satuli Canteen's food is perfect. And it's out of this world, literally. It's, you know, it's in Pandora. At Satuli, you can get fun and unique and tasty bowls featuring a variety of options where you'll pick your base and your meat and your toppings. But the main event here is the steamed cheeseburger pods. Well, they're the main event for us anyway. And kids and adults both love them. Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot is next. We can't stop talking about this restaurant. Honestly, it boggles my mind that when this used to be Liberty Inn in the American Adventure Pavilion in Epcot, it was no good. Nobody went there, it wasn't delicious, there was nothing to get here, it was blah, it was boring burgers, whatever. Now that it's barbecue, they're doing such a great job. It's really good food and now it's one of our top recommended places in Epcot. That's why we keep going back to these restaurants, that's why we keep re-reviewing these places over and over and over again because you never know when the place that you loved two years ago you're suddenly gonna hate and the places that you hated two years ago are going to be the number one locations right things change all the time in disney world anyway regal eagle is one of our favorite dining spots in disney world for a few different reasons right now for starters it's in the middle of world showcase which means it's a great halfway point during your exploration of epcot the barbecue you're gonna find here is not only consistently good, but the price you're gonna pay is gonna provide you with satisfyingly filling portions in the end. And best of all, you're very likely gonna find something on the menu that everyone in your group can enjoy, which can be a rarity at some restaurants, especially in World Showcase. I mean, you can't really go wrong with ribs, burgers, sandwiches, salads, and thick, rich cups of salty, creamy mac and cheese, right? Right. 
Columbia Harbor House and Magic Kingdom is next on our list. This is a popular surf and turf quick service located in Liberty Square. Now, before you folks tell me you don't like seafood and that's why you don't eat here, there's a lot more on the menu than just seafood. And for folks who like surf and turf or like both, then this is going to be a good location for them too. So platters offer stuff like fried fish and shrimp and lobster rolls, but whether you're looking for something fresh and grilled or deep fried and comforting, you got plenty of other dishes to choose from here. I love the chicken tenders here. Whenever we swing by this joint, we tend to grab our food and escape up to the second floor of the dining room for a quieter experience and better people watching windows and parade watching windows. Next on this list is the Polite Pig in Disney Springs. How about we bookend things with another Disney Springs quick service? This is the second quick service barbecue entry on our quick service list, and I promise you it's different barbecue than what you're gonna find at Regal Eagle. Polite Pig features modern barbecue and a variety of wood-fired, smoked, and grilled items, not to mention all drinks are served on tap, and there's a full bourbon bar for you to explore too, for another last minute option to add to your Disney Springs bar crawl. The owners of this place, James and Julie Petrakis, in partnership with Chef Brian Petrakis, are already well known in the Orlando area for their restaurants like the Ravenous Pig and Cask and Larder, which focus on using seasonal ingredients. Plus, back in 2022, Polite Pig was recognized by the Michelin Guide, so you know the food's got to be somewhat impressive, right? Now, what if you want to meet every single character? Let's say your goal is to meet as many unique Disney characters as you can without having to wait in line after line for them inside the parks. I totally get that. Respect. If that's the case, then make sure you save or plan on purchasing the Disney dining plan so you can secure reservations for these seven character dining locations. Oh my goodness, this sounds like a blast and I need to come on your trip with you. Okay. Akershus Royal Banquet Hall in Epcot. This is where you're going to meet multiple princesses without it being as hard to get reservations as it is to get at Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom. And it's cheaper to dine here too. You'll still get to meet characters like Snow White and Jasmine, Belle, Tiana, Princess Aurora, Ariel, sometimes Cinderella's even there. And you get to dine on Norwegian specialties and who doesn't want to do that? Note that characters do rotate out regularly, so you may see different gals out and about during your visit. Next is Artist Point at Wilderness Lodge. It's called Storybook Dining at Artist Point. And if you want to guarantee a meet and greet with the OG princess herself, as well as meet rare characters like Grumpy, Dopey, the Evil Queen, then Artist Point Storybook Dining with Snow White is a must-do prefix dinner experience. But this is not your typical prefix meal. This is a fairy tale themed meal where you can choose an entree and shared appetizer dessert for the whole table, all within an enchanted forest setting. And I have to tell you that the Yorkshire puddings here are massive, so please get the prime rib. If you don't want to get the prime rib, I understand I will not be sad. But if you do like prime rib and you like Yorkshire pudding, this is like the only place I've ever seen them in America this huge. All right, Garden Grill in Epcot is next. You might be able to meet Mickey and Pluto at other character dining restaurants in Disney World, but you're only going to meet Chip and Dale at Garden Grill. And along with meeting Farmer Mick, his trusty pooch companion, and the rapscallion chipmunks themselves, you're also going to be able to dine on a Chippendale-themed harvest feast. That doesn't mean you're eating chipmunks. It's okay. But it's going to be breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and it's a really, really good meal. No chipmunks included. While breakfast features a typical family-style spread of morning grub, lunch and dinner include comfort classic options like cornbread and salad and grilled steak and mashed potatoes and veggies and seasonal pie and slow-roasted turkey and mac and cheese. And a lot of the veggies, of course, were grown right down in the land greenhouses. So these are super, super fresh, y'all. Now, just want to clarify really quickly here. You can meet Chippendale guaranteed at the Fort Wilderness campfire. If you're meeting Mickey and Pluto someplace else and you don't want to book this table service, you can meet them at that campfire each night. So just throwing that in there. I know that you all have your spreadsheets out and everything. So there we go. If you don't have your spreadsheets out, why don't you? You should definitely have spreadsheets for this. Okay, Crystal Palace in Magic Kingdom. This is where you're going to meet and mingle with the 100 Acre Wood Gang. Pooh, Piglet, Tigger, and Eeyore are going to visit you at your table over at Crystal Palace as you dine on selections from a full buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
Now, extra tip alert. While you're checking into your reservation, request a window table to catch glimpses of the Main Street parades and cavalcades or the Magic Kingdom fireworks. You won't always be guaranteed a window seat, but asking does improve your chances of getting one. Next is Ohana breakfast at Polynesian Village Resort. In the evening, Ohana is a Hawaiian-style churrascaria-type service with no character dining. But if you make reservations for the best friend's breakfast instead, then you'll get to meet Lilo, Stitch, Mickey, and Pluto. See, told you Mickey and Pluto like to pop up in other places, but as for Lilo and Stitch, you're only going to be able to do a character dine with them right here at Ohana. Morning guests at Ohana will be served an all-you-can-eat American breakfast influenced by the unique tastes of Polynesia, like Hawaiian pork sausages, island-style potatoes, and Hawaiian breads. Next is the Hollywood and Vine breakfast in Hollywood Studios. Character dining varies depending on whether you make reservations at Hollywood and Vine for breakfast or for lunch and dinner. While the lunch and dinner buffet is held during Minnie's seasonal dine, where Minnie is the hostess for various dinner parties throughout the year and is often joined by Mickey, Goofy, and Pluto, breakfast is completely different and gives you and your youngins the chance to party with Disney Junior characters like Fancy Nancy and Vampirina, Doc McStuffins, and Roadster Goofy. And finally, we've got Chef Mickey's at the Contemporary Resort. Chef Mickey's may not be our all-time favorite buffet in the Disney scene, but it is the only buffet where you'll be able to meet all the Fab Five, Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, and Pluto in one place. Other character dining restaurants with Fab Five members usually have one or two missing out of the bunch, like Tusker House and Cape May Cafe, but not Chef Mickey's. This place makes sure everyone in the team is accounted for, though Mickey won't be out and about meeting guests on the dining room floor. Instead, you'll meet him either before or after your meal where he'll be waiting for you to come and take a picture with him. Now, what if you want a food challenge? Some Disney foods are huge and massive, and they're so big that you'll have no choice but to get a team together just to conquer them all. So if you think you're up for the challenge, here are the biggest shareable items at Disney restaurants that you can order to split among your entire group. First up, of course, we have to talk about the kitchen sink at Beaches and Cream. We are back at Beaches and Cream to take on the biggest ice cream challenge across all of Disney World property, the one, the only kitchen sink. The famous Kitchen Sink Sunday serves four people and features scoops of vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, cookies and cream, and mint chocolate chip ice cream. Yes, it ruins everything. Then it's smothered in basically every topping you can get at the restaurant, plus a full can of whipped cream. It's definitely a crowd pleaser with lots of merriment and fanfare included. And if you've never had mint chocolate chip ice cream with peanut butter sauce, now's your chance. Oh, and you can get it in a chocolate lovers or a Neapolitan version if your group prefers. Then you don't get to have mint chocolate chip ice cream with peanut butter sauce, though. So I don't know why you'd do that. Next is the Nautilus at Trader Sam's Gra Grotto. This is the most expensive cocktail you're going to find on the Trader Sam's menu inside Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. But there's a reason for that. This drink is meant to serve two or more guests and is made with rum, combier creme, and peche de vin liqueur, tropical juices, and falernum. But here's where things get really wild. Every time a Nautilus is ordered, the grotto starts to dive, dive, dive into the deep blue sea. You'll hear submarine sound effects, the lighting in the bar will turn a deep shade of blue, and that squid arm behind the bartenders will begin to move while the bartenders themselves will start slipping on their snorkel gear. It's truly an event. And that's not the only cocktail that'll trigger a full experience inside this grotto. Go ahead, order something for yourself and see what happens. By the way, if you are into sharing giant drinks with your friends, sometimes over at the Edison, you can get a whole punch bowl of your favorite drink and share that among a bunch of people too. Next is the festival food crawls. With each new Epcot festival, Epcot's free passport tasting booklets will include a new food crawl challenge for guests to try located on the back of the book. And while those are fun, we also have a ton of very unique food crawls in our DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. That's our super popular ebook that you can find over at dfbstore.com. We got lots of food crawls in there, lots of very interesting ones and ones maybe you wouldn't expect to do with your friends, but it's a blast, so definitely check that out. Then I want to put before you the sushi boat at Shikisai Sushi Izakaya. You got 300 bucks burning a hole in your pocket? Well, then... 
Shikisai has an assortment of sushi and sashimi that feeds up to four to six people. In all seriousness, $300 is nothing to sneeze at. That's quite the money to drop on a whole bunch of sushi, even if it is really high quality sushi. However, if you're in a sushi mood and you got a whole group that wants to take on this challenge with you, then this challenge is quite fun and tasty and brand new to the park. And this is of course over in Epcot, so head on over to World Showcase. Now consider this to be Foodie Challenge Part 2. Now, who's up for a challenge? Do we have some adventurers out there? One of the best ways you can use the free Play Disney Parks app is by taking on some or all of the DuckTales World Showcase adventure missions. Seven of the World Showcase pavilions host these different DuckTales quests, giving you and your family a whole new way to explore each represented country in an immersive scavenger hunt-like game. Now, don't worry, you have not accidentally switched into another video. We are still talking about the best things to eat in Disney World in 2024. So here's our tip. For a unique experience around Epcot, try taking on these quick and engaging DuckTales missions to help Huey, Dewey, Louie, Donald, and Uncle Scrooge take down the bad guys and make the world safe from villains. Then once you finish a mission, you can reward yourself with a little snack or drink in the pavilion you just saved the day, because even heroes deserve a treat. Now, this is a great way to eat around an Epcot festival, of which there are many, as you know. So this is a good way to kind of combine your world showcase adventure with a few nips and bites for everyone in the fam. And then the kids won't get super bored by being like, oh my gosh, we just have to keep going to these booths over and over again. No, they get to do the DuckTales adventure and then each country you explore, you get a little bite to eat. But if you don't wanna do it that way, that's okay. We've already created a little scavenger hunt for you anyway. So here are some quick snack recommendations for each pavilion with a DuckTales mission if you don't want to do a little eat around the festival thing. In Mexico, try the empanada de barbacoa at Chosa de Margarita. And if you're of drinking age, pick up a frozen marg while you're at it. In Norway, well, we already mentioned that school bread is a pretty controversial option at Kringla Bakery Og Cafe, but the Norwegian Kringla topped with your choice of almonds or chocolate may be an easier sell for your group. In China, you can order two pork egg rolls at the Joy of Tea for under five bucks. In Germany, just get anything from Caramel Kusha. Trust me, the fresh caramel here is a crowd pleaser. In Japan, find that refreshing kakigori shave ice over at Kabuki Cafe. In France, go all out with a croque glace at La Artisan de Glace, which is an ice cream sandwich made with your choice of ice cream and pressed right before your eyes into a warm brioche bun. This is really easy to share with the whole fam. And finally, in the United Kingdom, check out one of the authentic British snacks hiding out at the tea caddy shop like the Guinness Luxury Fudge or the Jammy Dodgers. Now, all this snacking scavenger hunt challenge can be time consuming if you're trying to get a lot out of the main Epcot attractions in one day. It's still a great and unique way to explore the park during those peak vacation seasons when the lines for rides are just getting a little too intense for your liking. Now, our next set of food items on this list is kind of sad. So last year, we learned that Dinoland USA and Animal Kingdom is going to be getting the meteor blast treatment too soon, or is 225 million years not enough time to make that comment? Yep, in the future, this section of the park will be closing to make way for an entirely new section themed around the tropical Americas, probably, which is going to feature properties like Encanto and Indiana Jones. And while we're excited to see what new experiences and foods these new sections will bring, it is sad to think about our favorite dino-rific eats and treats having to leave the scene, which is why we've created the ultimate Dinoland USA dining and attractions itinerary for you, so you can make sure you experience Route 498 to its fullest before it's swept off the map. Now at the start of the day, really kick things off on a high note with a ride on Dinosaur. While most everyone else will be flocking to Flight of Passage in Pandora, Dinosaur is going to be a walk-on first thing in the morning. Super easy. Dinoland USA doesn't really have any places to grab a quick breakfast, but if you step right outside of the area, the Asia section of the park has some counter services. Drink Walla, Trek snacks, that'll serve up those tasty breakfast tachos in the morning. And if you're looking for a coffee or tea to start your day, a quick jot over to Royal Anandapur Tea Company in the Asia section of the park is going to get you set up with that Joffrey's coffee or tea that you've come to love and get addicted to during your time in Disney World. This is also one of the only Joffrey's locations that serves up frozen chai, and it's a good frozen chai at that. In the afternoon, when the ride lines may be getting a bit too long in other areas, let your kids run around the boneyard playground for a bit while the grown-ups sit back and take a much-needed breather. At Trilo Bites, you can pick up the buffalo chicken chips as either a main meal for yourself or just as a snack to split among the group. 
Just keep in mind that they aren't always the most kid-friendly since they're a little spicy and they're topped with blue cheese dressing. We love them though. And even though it may never have been a priority ride for you before, you gotta take some time out of your day to appreciate Triceratops Spin one last time, right? Plus it's a fun and easygoing ride that anybody in the family can do, no matter how young or old. For a midday snack, try one of the ice cream cookie sandwiches from Dino Bite Snacks. We sure are hoping these sweet treats return in some sort of capacity when the Tropical Americas take over because they've been a DFB fan favorite for a long, 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 long time now. And just look at them, lots of creamy ice cream sandwiched between two huge cookies. Surely this won't be the end of one of our favorite desserts. And now it's time to step right up and win a dino prize over at the Fossil Fun Games. These carnival style games do require vouchers in order to play, which you can purchase at Chester and Hester's Dinosaur Treasures. What makes this experience even more fun are the Dinoland USA prizes, which more than likely will become major collectibles once this part of the park disappears for good. To wrap up your time in Dinoland USA, it's time for one last meal at Restaurant Asaurus, one of my favorite counter service locations in all of Disney World. This is a quick service location that offers a variety of theme park staples like burgers and salads and chicken nuggets, alongside unique and kitschy dining room theming. While the menu is fairly simple, the setting is anything but. As this story goes, paleontology students turn their home base into a restaurant, and now you get to peruse all their cool props and equipment, complete with plenty of sight gags and punny humor. Seriously, take some time to do a little research of your own here by exploring all the fun little details before or after your meal. And guess what else? The Restaurantosaurus Lounge is also tucked into this counter service location. Small bites and cocktails are served in this surprisingly relaxing little corner of an otherwise bustling spot. While the lounge hours can be limited, you'll find a sign posted outside of the restaurant letting you know when and if it's going to be open for business the day of your visit. Now who's ready for a Disney Springs bar crawl? If you don't want to pay for a full park ticket to try drinking around the world at Epcot, you can hop around the Disney Springs scene to try several interesting and tasty cocktails, draft beers, margaritas, wines, or whatever else might be your poison of choice. While I do trust y'all, really I do, I feel like this is a good time to remind everyone to please drink responsibly when and if you decide to attempt any sort of Disney bar crawl. Drink plenty of water, take breaks in between, maybe even break up the challenge across multiple days of your trip and make sure you got enough food in your system so you're not drinking on an empty stomach. Also, please don't drive. Okay, got the disclaimer out there. Now let's start crafting the bar crawl of your dreams. You're going to start over at the basket, which is Wine Bar George's quick service window. Here, you can cool down with one of their frozen wine concoctions, like our personal favorite, the Froscato, made with Dole Whip, pineapple, Moscato, white wine, and vodka. And after hitting a few quick shops or maybe munching on some of the basket's ever-so-tasty mac and cheese bites, you can swing by Homecoming's Shine Bar and Social, to order a moonshine cocktail or sample one of the ones currently on tap with the moonshine flight. After a couple of rounds of bowling at Splitsville Luxury Lanes next, you can head over to their drinks to go window for one of their fun frozen drinks like the pina colada or coconut margarita. And better yet, you can even purchase a 20 ounce refillable squeeze bottle or a 28 ounce pin sipper, which both come with discounted frozen cocktail refills for life. Frozen cocktail refills cost $13 for the squeeze bottle and $16 for the pin sipper. Now, a brand new entry to this Disney Springs bar crawl is Summer House on the Lake, which just opened up this past December. This might be a good spot for you to make dinner reservations if you want a table service with both unique options like salmon poke nachos and potato salad deviled eggs, as well as more familiar options too, like crispy chicken sandwiches and classic cheese pizzas. But if you're here just for the drinks, Summer House's attached cookie bar serves a wide selection of wine, beer, handcrafted cocktails, and non-alcoholic beverages, as well as cookies too, duh, all of which you can take with you on the go. And you really can't leave out Jock Lindsay's hangar bar when attempting a Disney Springs bar crawl. All of Jock Lindsay's cocktails are Indiana Jones themed, which matches the ambiance of the bar itself. This place has some pretty unique cocktails like the rum and tangerine liqueur cool-headed monkey, the vodka and cranberry fountain of youth that'll go perfectly with those fountain of youth chicken wings served to the side of lime sour cream, the whiskey, gin, and pear Scottish professor, and the rum and ginger beer Bam's Barnstormer. Now remember, if you're going to go to Jock Lindsay's, try to sit in that diving bell. That's my favorite place to sit in the whole place. And it's always first come first served here, so... Don't be weird about hanging out outside the diving bell till the people in there leave, but you know, keep an eye on it. Now, bonus tip, several places around Disney Springs have happy hour specials throughout the week, which will give you a nice discount on select appetizers and drinks. 
You can learn more about all the Disney Springs restaurants that feature these happy hour offerings in our brand new 2024 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. It's now available on dfbstore.com website. Make sure to type in code YouTube to save money on your total guidebook purchase. And you're going to get all the happy hours listed all over Disney Springs. Now, Disney Springs has so many other great places to drink. We're not mentioning them all here, but, you know, places like the Paddlefish Rooftop Bar, great place to watch the sunset. The Edison, if you're super into steampunk, 1920s, 1930s, that's going to be a great place for you to go. You've got the Boathouse. Everybody loves sitting out on the dock there. There's lots of great places to eat and drink in Disney Springs. Oh my gosh, I didn't even mention Raglan Road, where of course you're going to get a pint of Guinness, because what else would you get there? But there's lots, there's lots more to get to. But plenty of places to go. Disney Springs really is a treasure trove of amazing food and drinks. So if you are a food and drinks person, which you are because you're here with us, definitely research that a little bit. I think we've got videos on best places to eat in Disney Springs. We've ranked the restaurants. Um, So we got a bunch of information in our videos about Disney Springs to find that playlist as well. All right, I get that not everyone's going to want to do a Disney Springs bar crawl. So how about a cookie crawl instead? Here's a full list of all the best places to pick up cookies while you're in Disney Springs. And again, you can totally break this up over the course of your trip, just so you don't wind up with a tummy ache by the end of the day. First is Gideon's Bakehouse. We have to talk about Gideon's. It's the -the over-the-top bakery. It's got giant Disney cookies that are like a half pound. Yep, you read that right. Now, if we have to name just one cookie that we crown the king of cookies here, which believe me is a hard thing to do, then the coffee cake cookie is a solid choice. This is exclusive to this particular location. It's a delicious vanilla bean cookie filled with cinnamon strudel, then topped with double baked butter crumbs. You have to get to Disney Springs early if you wanna get your hands on this one though. It can only be ordered in the mornings and until they sell out. And if you're looking for something a bit simpler, look no further than the original that started it all, the chocolate chip cookie, which is a half pound of buttery, sugary goodness, completely covered in giant chocolate chips and sprinkled liberally with sea salt. Next place for cookies is the Cookie Bar. This is at Summer House on the Lake, and it opened its own walk-up cookie bar in Disney Springs on December 14th, 2023, so it's brand new. But unlike the main restaurant, you don't need a reservation to check out this cookie bar. We tried a ton of different sweets here as soon as we had the chance to, but the cookies that came out on top for us were the lemon cookie and the crispy rice chocolate chip cookie. The lemon cookie may not have been a looker, but it was tart, fresh, and fruity with a strong lemon flavor. Meanwhile, the crispy rice chocolate chip cookie is the cookie bar's classic chocolate chip, topped with brown butter Rice Krispie Treats. The Rice Krispie Treats make this one a very, very sweet one, but there's a fun textural element thanks to that cereal. Moving on to Sprinkles next in Disney Springs, They may be known for their gourmet cupcakes and a variety of unique flavors, but they also make one mean cookie. There are actually a few cookies to choose from here, but the one we keep coming back to time and again whenever it's available, and you guys know this if you watch the videos a long time, is the salted oatmeal cornflake cookie. So yeah, we're getting another cookie topped with breakfast food, so that's, you know, a thing you need to know. And this treat is chewy and sweet and sprinkled with coarse salt to give it an elevated, slightly savory flavor. It is incredible. Moving on to Aaron McKenna's Bakery NYC. Vegans and gluten-free diners should definitely put Aaron McKenna's at the top of their list because this bakery makes fresh, gluten-free and vegan-friendly cookies and other sweet treats daily. But one of our favorite cookie options here, no matter if you're vegan or gluten-free or not, is the vanilla dipped cookie sandwich. The cookie and icing is undetectably vegan and gluten-free, and there's just something about the way the chocolate dip, the chocolate chip cookie, and the frosting all work together to create a texture that works 10 out of 10. We love it. Okay, what did I tell you? Food really can be a theme park. We really tried to give you fun experiences with this video instead of just listing the same restaurants over and over again, right? So I hope you enjoy these little fun experiences, scavenger hunts, things to do with your family, ways to avoid the crowds. I hope that plussed up this video for you a little bit. Now, before you head out, don't forget about our full and totally free 2024 snack guide over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks. That's all for you. We've figured out the best snacks for the year, and you can go ahead and grab that completely free right now. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.